Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting being held here in the town council chambers. And the date is Tuesday, September 26, 2017. And I want to remind everyone to turn off their cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Ellie, can you please do the roll call? Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Forrest? Present. Mr. Hill? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mrs. Basil? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Morris? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Great, thank you. I would like Elliot and Mallory McMullen. Elliot's a third grader at Hamner, and Mallory's a fifth grader there. Would they come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Elliot and Mallory. Okay, Mr. Emmett, do we have any student or staff recognition tonight? I have uh, several um, quick items under staff and student recognition, uh, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, first and foremost, uh, I would like to uh, recognize someone uh, in the Weathersfield community that we lost recently. Uh, on September 15, 2017, John Sassente, uh, affectionately known as Pop, uh, a longtime security officer at Weathersfield uh, High School passed away. Um, Pop was uh, an icon to say the least. Uh, his badge certainly said so as the living legend. Um, at the funeral service, the Reverend talked about um, John's life and what John had done. He talked about his management experience. He talked about his police experience. And the Reverend said that uh, John's most prized accomplishment was the 28 years he spent at Weathersfield High School as a school security officer. John Sassente uh, touched many lives at WHS and um, I think it's fitting that we recognize him with a moment of silence. Thank you. A couple of other brief items. I'd certainly like to give a uh, nice shout out to the staff, specifically Sue Gallo and the uh, teaching staff at High Crest uh, Elementary School for reaching out to Weathersfield High School and uh, sending over uh, cookies and pastries, um, recognizing that Weathersfield High School has lost two staff members. As you recall, um, earlier in August, we lost Cindy Pagliarello as well. So um, thanks very much to the High Crest staff for recognizing um, their brothers and sisters over at uh, Weathersfield High School. And last but not least, I need to give a shout out to the Weathersfield High School girls field hockey team and coach Colleen Boudet. Um, I get a variety of emails, and these are the types of emails I like to get because they speak to the um, culture and climate we have at Weathersfield High School. This is an email that was written to Coach uh, Boudet from a um, uh, official that was officiating the field hockey game. Hi, Colleen. I refereed your game against Mercy the other day. Before I forget, I want to thank you for having the girls meet us as we came into the stadium to let us know the particulars of the field. It's the little gestures that go a long way. I referee a number of games in sports, so it's nice to see class and sportsmanship exemplified where there are so many other coaches just concerned about winning and losing. If only other coaches would take your lead when it comes to your sportsmanship and that of the students, the games would be a better place. Thanks, Mike Nealon. So thank you, uh, field hockey team, and thank you, Coach Boudet. All set? Yes. Thank you. Um, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on September 12th, 2017. Are there any corrections? Move adoption. Okay. I do have a correction. Um, on page four, there's a discussion about um, Ms. Granado and Mr. Morris going to the student media production. I think that was Mr. Cassio. You didn't go? I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move adoption as corrected. Second. Okay. 
All in favor of that correction? Aye. 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 Okay, Ellie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the motion to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. Also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the Special Board of Ed meeting on September 18, 2017. Are there any corrections? Move adoption. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstention. That's Mrs. Vasil and Mr. Cassio? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so those minutes are approved. Now, is there anyone in the audience wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium, and may I remind you to state your name and address and that it's a five-minute limit. Okay, so we'll move along. Um, Mr. Emmett, I guess we're back to you. Are there any communications? Yes, there are. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening again, everyone. Um, just wanted to provide you an update to the extent that I can. Uh, as you are probably all very well aware, there still is no budget. Um, in terms of our operating budget at this point in time, we had a finance uh, subcommittee meeting prior to this meeting. Um, we are uh, within budget at this point in time. Uh, we continue to work under a budget freeze in an effort to uh, maintain savings wherever we can. I also want to make sure that we continue to um, bring forward the plan of moving forward. We're going slowly but steadily. We are starting to have the conversations with our groups around um, extracurricular activities and field trips. We want to put the word out now that they aren't guaranteed. Please understand nothing's been canceled at this point in time. We're just in a holding pattern, quite frankly. We're waiting for that budget to come in and to see where we end up. Again, I think the important piece to remember here is that we are business as usual at this point in time. Our um, classes are staffed. We have support staff in place. Um, we are continuing to hold off on uh, multiple positions, but those positions where um, we have teachers in front of kids, those are positions that we must fill. Um, we continue to watch the budget very carefully. Um, we are going to be meeting with uh, members of town council um, in the near future to discuss potential plans as the budget plays itself out. Certainly it's frustrating. Um, you know, typically we're not talking about budget issues in you know, late September. Um, we're on with our school year. But with that being said, we continue to uh, focus on that which mm -hmm. is most important and that is our students. A um, Couple of other items. Um, I have to say the high school has been an extraordinarily busy place. I did get over there yesterday. I was able to catch some of the boys' soccer game, the uh, girls' freshman field hockey game, a one nothing victory over Glastonbury. Very pleased with that. Um, JV volleyball and just a little bit of the varsity volleyball um, match. Also want to give uh, recognition, uh, the girls' swim team last week <coughs> defeated Glastonbury for the first time in recent memory. Uh, there were two pool records that were actually set at that meet, so um, congratulations to them. We've got another um, uh, fall production coming up, so um, we'll have information in your Friday packet with regard to that. Also want to let you know that as we get close to October 1st, we are currently working on the enrollment report. Um, that will not be in this Friday's packet, but it will be in next Friday's packet. So we'll have an update on class sizes for you uh, and what we're reporting to the uh, state of Connecticut. And I also, uh, just to let everybody know, it happens to be Mr. Moore's birthday tonight. So Mr. Moore, hey. happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Nice place to celebrate. <laughs> you right after the budget. Thank you, Mr. Moore. That's, that's okay, thank, thank you. you. Any, any comments on Mr. Emmett's comments? Okay. How well, old are you, Mr. Moore? <laughs> <laughs> we'll sing. Actually, Madam Chair, I just have one, one comment regarding um, outreach to the various groups in terms of that they may have to fundraise or do things on their own. That has been communicated to them. And do they have, and I know it's hard because we're, we're looking at a moving target here, but at what point do they need to pull the trigger and say, all right, we need to fund this ourselves. We need to, it just depend, obviously depend on the program. It depends on the time of year. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I, I think it's really too premature to talk about pulling the plug. And, and clearly, you know, when we talk about potential reductions and, and savings, we're trying to avoid anything that is programmatic. Right now, as it stands with the executive order going into to place, we're not having a budget, we're looking at not getting that ECS, um, the 25% of the ECS in October. You know, again, we have a budget that's been adopted. We're going to run from that budget, which is why I think it's important. We need to talk with the folks from town council and talk about options that we have. I just think it would be disingenuous to not talk about the reductions. Right. And again, I know, you know, I got an email over the course of the weekend from a, a, a band parent talking about, you know, how important the band trip is. Yes, I understand that fully. But when you're talking about the potential of cuts, these cuts go well beyond just those types of programs. They go to people. Um, so I just, I want to be clear about that. And I'm not trying to sound doom and gloom because I do believe, I, I hold faith in our elected officials that we will get that budget no, right I, away. I appreciate that. And so, I appreciate the fact that we're kind of putting those steps in place so that in case that doomsday scenario does happen, these kids could have some options of their own. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Good point. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, as we move on, there are no action items on our agenda tonight or reports. So we'll move on to meetings held, the School Projects Building Committee on 9-11. That's you again. Uh, yes, that meeting, that's going back in time. Uh, at this point in time, we are just waiting on the uh, approval of the technology for the high school. It's uh, under the project. It is something that was budgeted for. Uh, town Council took it up at their last meeting and they tabled it. Um, I'm hopeful that that will be approved at the next Town Council meeting. Okay, then we had a special Board of Education meeting on 918. John? Uh, yes, this was a meeting we held to address a variety of um, union grievances, teachers, and paraprofessionals. Um, the minutes of the meeting are something we just approved so they're a little more identified there but it, it was not a fun evening where we had to listen to complaints from staff but it is part of the job and they have a legitimate right to deal with those things and it was appropriate and so we have acted accordingly okay thank you um, and then the correct council met on September 20th, 2017. And the correct council is the Capital Region Educational Council, which Weathersfield is a member of the 35 surrounding towns. Um, and for almost the last year, the council spends a majority of the time on what the latest news is from the state concerning the budget and its impact on the town and on the correct magnet schools and project choice. One member spoke of the devastating impact of the solutions presently on the table, and he asked the question, quote, how does a school system recover from such a budget blow, unquote. The legal liaison for CREC and the General Assembly informed us of the latest back and forth and the lack of communication within and between the parties. We will all be closely watching the state budget crisis in the news and hoping for a solution that does not harm the number four state education system in the country. Okay, and then our Finance and Information Management Committee, which we just held, Polly? Uh, yes, we, uh, uh, we held that this, uh, this afternoon uh, prior to this meeting, and I think Mr. Emmett once again covered the, covered it for me thank you very much you're welcome you don't want to add anything at all <laughs> no I you're can't all set can't think of a thing okay <laughs> thank you okay so <clears throat> meeting schedule we have a school projects building committee meeting on october 10th um, at 6 30 and finance and information management committee on 10 10 at six o'clock all right is there any unfinished business we're moving through this fast. Elaine. Um, Mrs. Granado and, and Mr. Emmett, I visited um, Highcrest School. And because on the charts that you send us on the class sizes, they have the largest fourth grades. And I did visit each fourth grade of 25 students each. And, and, and those teachers are magnificent. They have it running beautifully. They do. And um, I asked, is there any way that the board could help them, you know, because 25 students is, is a, a massive amount of correcting, 
and only because I did the job, I know that. It's a massive amount of individualized testing in the beginning of the year to get their place of, of learning and reading and level of reading. But um, so if we do get any money, um, and, and that's just like a big if, they will all, all, none of them complained, Mike, at all about the situation. They realize they're, everybody's hands are tied right now. And they were great about it. But if we do get any extra money, we, we can look at a way to help them out a little bit maybe. Just my thought, thank you. Okay. And a comment on that, as we put the budget together, one of our sacred cows, as we call it, was small class sizes. And um, right now everything is on hold. Um, but yes, I, things would be considered once we get started yeah, again. Thanks. Any other unfinished business? Okay, looking at the audience, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address, and may I remind you that you are limited to five minutes. No one? All right, are there any board comments? Madam. Just a few Go comments. Go ahead, Janet. <laughs> I don't usually speak this much, but I do have a few things to say. Um, the band is going to their first competition this Saturday at Rocky Hill High School. Um, it's early, so if you can come out and support, that'd be great. Um, we started our fruit sale, and it ends uh, November 1st. Lots of kids selling fruit. Support any one of them. I'm not saying mine, but there are quite a few kids there. Um, they use that for their band field trips, um, instruments, whatever it is that they need to get for um, the band and um, replenish any supplies that we need throughout the year. Um, I have a question about the summer reading program. Um, I was wondering if the numbers of students that participated were the students that were currently in that grade or going into that grade? Going into the grade. Okay. And so how was it in compared to last year's numbers? Did we increase in participation? Okay, not important, just curious. It was very interesting to see such high numbers Friday and percentages. Update. Yeah, that's, it was really nice to see that. Um, the other thing is I was um, lucky enough to participate at Madres Latinas um, fundraiser that we had at Emerson Williams this past Saturday. And um, I was able to get a little bit of a tour at Emerson by the custodian, Jimmy DeSenza. And it was very nice inside. I was so impressed. And, the stinky carpet was gone and it was really nice and um, I, I but one thing I did notice is the amount of crumbling bricks in the front of the building um, in the as you pull into the circle it was it, yeah it was amazing I lost track after you know counting 14 of how many bricks were just and it wasn't just the mortar I was really surprised at how bad you know, we have a beautiful Band-Aid on the inside and the outside of the building is just just crumbling. Um, I think Jimmy said the building's like 60 years old, something like that. 1952. Yeah. It was built when the high school was built. So um, it, it was really sad to see that. I didn't realize what a, what a um, bur beaten that building has taken, and which I'm sure a lot of the older ones have as well. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Anyone else for comment? Matthew? Briefly to the superintendent, um, just was on a similar note as uh, Janet. Um, I was walking into Charles Wright and noticed, you know, there's kind of a really big, um, it's kind of a vegetation area right in the front where there's kind of a, it's not like, a, it's kind of a flower box, but it was kind of, uh, had some weeds in it, it was kind of cleaned up, but it might be, if it's possible to get sort of someone out there to kind of take a look at beautifying that particular area, I know that, um, you know, I saw Glenn, the principal, he's like, you know, it'd be nice if this, is the gateway to the entrance of the entire school could maybe get maybe it's a mulch you know or something but it yeah. is kind of beat up there in the front i to totally agree with you that's one of those issues where it's a, a town function so we'll definitely i'll follow some up some nice communication more. we're all working together on this it's a little yeah. flower it's a big flower box but mm -hmm. if there's anything that can be done it'll be nice for everybody yeah. that walks into the school and so often it is the ptos that um do the heavy lifting when it comes to landscaping Very too true. Mm. Anyone else for comment? John. Thank you. Um, had the opportunity to go to the Corn Fest the other weekend, and uh, Weathersfield High School was well represented. 
uh, with the marching band, the cheerleaders, the dance team, uh, did a phenomenal job. The uh, band uh, really did a great performance and uh, their theme this year is Queen. And you know, I think everyone's getting into it and they did a good job. The uh, dance team uh, performed. They're coming off a win from last year, so hopefully they can maintain that. And the cheerleaders did a phenomenal job uh, and uh, all their stunts got up and they did a good job. So congratulations to our students and all the volunteers that made the Corn Fest a success. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Polly. Just, oh, thank you. I just wanted to mention that um, this is Granado and I went over to um, Webb for the International Day of Peace the other day and the kids all made um, pinwheels and so they had two uh, groups of kids, the four to six and the pre-K through three. And um, it was it, it was such a great day and it was extremely windy but we had so much fun and uh, the kids were so thrilled that they were able to make these pinwheels themselves and and uh, the hardest part was getting them in the ground but um, and then we um, uh, uh, actually spent about an hour there uh, uh, touring around the school um, and I, it was it was a really great experience for me. I I, I found that uh, going into in in and out of the classrooms first of all is is always fun. But um, the there was some there was t star testing going on at the time, and we were able to uh, uh, talk to the the uh, the teachers who were uh, working on the program and working with the kids and being able to see the kids on the on the computers and. Um, uh, doing what they did it was just it's amazing to see how incredible it is to see the kids on the um, uh, the technology at such a young age and how well they work on it so it was really a, a, I enjoy very much uh, getting that opportunity and it's very nice to go and speak with staff because there are a lot of um, things of being able to see what's uh, what's happening and to understand individually what's when it's happening so uh, I thank them very much for their hospitality um, to follow up on uh, Mr. Cassio's uh, with the Corn Fest I was there as well and um, was very proud of our um, of our students and um, uh, the other thing was we the uh, hunger action team had a had uh, at each of the entrances, uh, there were tables where donations could be made for food um, or cash. Um, and those of us who stood at the entrance, <laughs> reminding people when they had their money out that um, this was a good <laughs> cause. And, and uh, I was very excited to find out the other day that they uh, were able to collect nearly $1,000 in wow. cash. So um, that's, uh, that will be certainly very, uh, very helpful and I just wanted to put in a uh, I went to a um, uh, to the JV um, football uh, game the other the other day and it's very exciting to see the the team that is coming up and um, uh, our the the possible look at the kids who are basically our future and see how well uh, they're doing and uh, how proud we should be of them so that's it for me, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to life at the high school. Justin? Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Um, I have a, in response to um, Mr. Forrest's comment about Charles Wright, might I suggest having the environmental club do something with that? Taking a look at that, that might be an interesting opportunity for them. Um, Good idea. Blue Eagle News, I heard that Blue Eagle News was assisting the board in um, getting out their strategic plan. We have a football game on Friday. This, is, this will be the marching band's first performance. Um, the talent show is October 12th in the high school auditorium for the Hurricane Harvey and other hurricane victims. And I also, the high school also um, 
took part in the Pinwheels for Peace on International Peace Day. Let's see, what else? That's pretty much it. Justin, okay. Justin, the talent show is at the high school auditorium. Yes. At, can you give me a time? Um, I will, just okay. not right now. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay, thank you, Justin. Thank you. All right. Um, Excuse me, could I just ahead. ask one question? Sure. I see in our um, Friday packet that um, there is a, um, uh, a letter from, uh, from a school in Haiti that, uh, where the um, our used desks and uh, chairs were sent and I just I hadn't been aware of that and I was just wondering how you contacted them and uh, it, it, what the situation was yeah, there I was pleased to hear that yeah that was uh, actually happened quite some time back during the renovation project where we had um, extra furniture that was being replaced okay. um, and uh, we worked with father Frechette and the um, furniture has gone to Haiti where it is being used in orphanages throughout Haiti. Um, I talked with Fred who provided me the letter that he received and um, we'd love to see some pictures to actually see this being used uh, and I think you know when you think about it from a perspective of you know we have so much and we have so much to give this was a good opportunity rather than this going for scrap yeah. being able to be reused um so we're hopeful that um father can get that um the photographic uh, documents for us so i can share those with you so also. how were they how were they shipped and were they uh, i'll have to get you that information oh, i don't know the details because they went out a while ago to me, <laughs> yeah how did they uh, Jeff Blue. don't worry First about Okay, anyone else? Uh, All right. <laughs> May I have a motion to move to executive session for the purpose of discussion and finalizing of the superintendent of schools contract? So moved. So, so moved. Oh, okay. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. All opposed? Any ex abstentions? Okay, so that includes the public part of our board meeting. Thank you all for coming.